Pacific is the world's largest ocean and the home to a vast sea of islands. For thousands of years, Pacific communities, each with their own unique traditions and cultures, have been the stewards of these biodiverse environments. Traditional ecological knowledge passed down through generations fostered sustainable societies and allowed our people to inhabit these unique surroundings. We now face unprecedented challenges. Climate change is the single greatest threat to the security, livelihoods, and well-being of Pacific communities. We are living through irregular season changes, more frequent and violent storms, longer droughts, more severe and widespread floods, and rising tides. We have reached a critical point. The survival of Pacific communities are at stake. My name is Pio Kumbuai. I am the headman of Vendrala village on Vitilevu Island. Our source of life is the land and the sea. We catch fish that we eat in the village and sell at the market. In the forest, we grow fresh fruits like bananas and cacao. We have a garden where we grow root crops. Everyone contributes in the village. When the tide is low, the shore becomes our playground. Since I was a boy, we have been experiencing many climate change impacts. The coral reef is dying. Water has reached the seawall and floods over it in the spring tides. The rains are taking longer to arrive. And then, Winston came. In 2016, the strongest cyclone to hit the Pacific since records began made landfall in Vendrala village in Fiji. All 70 houses and the community's food sources were destroyed in just 30 minutes. Winston came in a new direction up over the mountain and landed right on top of us. We were lying on the muddy floors of our houses as the roofs and walls were ripped off. My three-year-old baby was lying next to me silent, leaves covering his body. We had no time to prepare. Cyclone Winston caused extensive damage across the Pacific, killing dozens of people, displacing communities, and destroying property and livelihoods. The disaster shook us, but we came together to recover and slowly to heal. Disaster recovery costs our governments a huge percentage of their yearly budget. Spending more on climate impacts leaves us with less to invest in social services and development, threatening community stability and putting opportunities for future generations at risk. 
Vaindrala village has implemented local actions to better secure their futures. They banned fishing for five years to restore marine productivity and improve long-term food stocks. Mangroves are being replanted to improve ecological resilience against storm surges and to rehabilitate fish habitats. But much more needs to be done. We would like an evacuation center to be built. We want assistance for skills and education and to increase our awareness. And we want to learn new ways to better prepare us for future storms. Climate change is a matter of security and stability for Pacific Island communities. For some, rebuilding is not an option. For Narikosa village, sea level rise threatens to make their land uninhabitable. My name is Katarina Rarasia. I am the chief of Narikosa village on Kandavu Island. Our clans have been living here for four generations. We take the boats to go fishing. When it's good weather, we can catch a lot of fish. The big fish we sell at the market, and the small fish we keep to eat. If it's bad weather, we don't catch much. And the bad weather is much more frequent now. I've been noticing the climate changes since I was a little girl. It's happening faster. It's getting hotter every year. Harder to grow taro. Harder to sleep. Storms and surging tides, which are made worse by rising sea levels, damage naturally protective coral reefs and mangroves. And salt water contaminates croplands and freshwater sources. As livelihoods and critical resources diminish, competition grows over access to land and resources, endangering food and water security, further stressing vulnerable communities. Some high-risk communities must relocate. In Narikoso, a small group of homes were identified in a red zone. They were at the greatest risk of tidal inundation. Homes were rebuilt on higher ground, but separating communities can cause tensions and weaken essential collective resilience. Those of us left down here, we need safe water. We need an extended sea wall. And we need to move all our homes. When we are divided, we can't do anything. We need to bring the community back together. When we are together, we are strong. When we are together, we can face anything. Across the Pacific, communities are discovering old and new ways to secure their future in the face of a changing climate. My name is Manasa Rokosuka, and I am the coordinator of the Lomani Ngau project. Lomani Ngau means to care deeply for Ngau Island. Our elders have been experiencing climate change impacts all their lives. The changes are now more rapid and intense. Each village is affected in different ways. Some face the full force of strong cyclones. Others are exposed to tidal surges. Some are more vulnerable to flooding. We are all witnessing the death of our coral reefs and decline of marine life. We realized we had to secure our futures by protecting our island's rich natural environment. 
we have a saying, Wakarau ni sisi ngatoka, which means to prepare while there is still time. Wakarau ni sisi ngatoka. As our communities confront climate change, the fair and inclusive management of local resources becomes ever more important. In support of these goals, Ngao Islanders obtained a grant from the United Nations. We started planting trees to protect the shoreline, like tawola and mangroves. Then we planted hardwoods and sandalwood inland for building materials. There is a ban on burning and cutting down native trees to protect biodiversity. And we created forest reserves to protect watersheds. We only recently reopened our fishing grounds after a seven-year break because outsiders were coming into our protected areas to fish at night. It wasn't fair for our people. In just over a decade, the people of Ngao have collectively transformed their island. With more help from the international community, much more can be done. And Ngao can become a beacon of hope and resilience for the rest of the world. We need more support to adapt to future climate challenges and mitigate risk to secure our futures. Seeds for our organic farms. Sea walls for our unprotected villages. Funding and resources for coral restoration. And financial and legislative support to create official community-managed marine protected areas. It's our mission to build a better now, a better Pacific, a better world for future generations to live peacefully. Across the Pacific, at both regional and local levels, we continue to adapt and build upon our resilience. We are proud to share what we have learned to better prepare global communities for the challenges that many more will soon face. But more collective action is needed. We must all urge our governments and major carbon emitters to commit to systemic climate action and be held accountable. Everyone has a role to play. Global leaders must end fossil fuel subsidies, phase out coal, put a price on carbon, and deliver on the promised $100 billion of climate finance to support developing countries. Climate change spares no region of the world. The global community must stand bravely in the face of these challenges. Are you willing to rise to the occasion? Only by working together can we safeguard the survival of our Pacific Sea of Islands and the planet that we all share.